All right, so just a few days ago, I put out a video, how to make money fast with snakes. And essentially that video shows you how to start up a ball python breeding operation without breaking the bank. And in this video, I'm gonna do kind of just the opposite. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go on a virtual snake shopping spree. And essentially what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pretend that I'm gonna buy into five different ball python projects and that I have a virtually unlimited budget so I can buy any snake that I want. And I wanna buy two snakes for each project, a male and a female. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through all the projects that I would be interested in as a breeder looking at the different ball python morphs and what's available on the internet. And I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna load the, the snakes that are for sale and the ones that have sold. So, you know, since we're, it's kind of a virtual game that we're playing, we can actually pick from any snake from any project. We can pick 10 snakes from five different morphs with an unlimited budget. I think it'll be pretty fun. Let's jump over to Morph Market and shop for some snakes. All right, so I'm over here at morphmarket.com and I actually sorted by all the snakes that are for sale and that have sold. And to my amazement, there's actually 103,365 ball pythons that we can choose from today. That is a pretty amazing number of ball pythons. The last time I looked, I think it was only like 60,000. Now it's jumped up to over 100,000, which is amazing. So out of all those snakes and all the different morphs, the first thing I want to look at is, you guessed it, it is the Sunset Ball Python. If you've been watching my videos, you know I'm kind of, I was always looking at the Sunset for a long time, but it's so expensive to jump into the Sunset Project. As a matter of fact, some of these at the very top here, I sorted by the most expensive, and a lot of them just say inquire, which means essentially if you can't afford it, don't even ask what the price is. It is astronomical. And if you come down here at the, the first one that has the highest price, the, the highest price that's actually listed is $35,000 for a sunset. It's pretty amazing. So I was looking through all the different sunsets. There's a total of 35 on here. This is kind of the first page where you can see some sunsets. I have the second page open over here. Some pretty impressive combos. The sunset is a recessive, so you actually, it's kind of a long game to actually get the visual and then produce more sunsets. A lot of people pretty much are working with the heads, and then when they actually get the visuals, they sell the visuals for kind of a really high price. Instead of holding them back, they sell them for pretty high. So I decided on two sunsets. The first one here, take a look at this one. This is beautiful. This is an Enchi Cinnamon Sunset. And this one actually sold for $25,000. And you know, the, the pretty much the budget's unlimited. So hey, I'll take this one, 25 grand, no problem at all. <laughs> it's pretty amazing. And it's uh, $70 shipping. I think they could probably waive the shipping if I spent $25,000 on the snake. So if you look over here, this is actually the female, and I decided I wanted to add a male sunset to it. Over here, this is, take a look at this, this is beautiful. This is just a pastel on top of the sunset, and this one sold for $25,000. That is pretty incredible. So with the male and the female, and if you bring them together, if you actually come over here, I actually plugged them into the uh, the World of Ball Pythons Genetic Wizard, and I entered Cinnamon Enchi Sunset. You cross that with a Pastel Sunset, and here are the results below. You get eight different combinations, and every single snake is a visual sunset. As a matter of fact, this would be a really good investment if you're actually investing into the Sunset Project, but you have to come up with 50 grand to actually throw down to buy two snakes and hopefully nothing happens to your snakes. I would suggest probably practicing on some normals or single gene animals before you actually jumped into some of this high-end stuff because if anything happened or you know you didn't have the right environment or you know you're trying to figure out how to get them to feed sometimes it could be really tricky breeding ball pythons it's not always guaranteed so I would definitely start with something Probably a little bit less expensive if you're just jumping into ball pythons, but in this scenario, the, the budget's unlimited and we're just having fun playing around. So I'm gonna add both those to pretty much the project that we're doing today. And so already we spent 50 grand on two snakes. So if we move on to the next gene, 
This is one thing I've really been interested in. If I had anything to choose from, I'd, I'd definitely jump into the Sunset Project, and I would also jump into the Monsoon Project. The Monsoon's kind of interesting because it was first discovered by Dave Green, just breeding some random snakes together, and popped out the snake that he couldn't explain. It was pretty amazing. Come to find out, it was a new gene, it's recessive, and he named it the Monsoon. And it's it's a pretty newcomer, you may have not heard it before, and, and there's not a whole whole lot of people doing any a lot of stuff with the monsoon and I was looking at all the ones that are sold and for sale and they're all females unfortunately so we really can't get the pair of visual monsoons so the, for, the, for the female you know which one I'm gonna pick of course I'm gonna pick the prettiest one here this is an impressive snake I can't even believe that is just one straight recessive mutation it's pretty amazing and this one so we'll take this one we'll add it to the list that is another fifteen thousand dollars as a matter of fact this one's still for sale if i had 15 grand i might actually throw down and actually pick this one up and get into the project so for the males so now we have to think about all right we have a female what are we going to breed to that female that we can actually come over here and look at the het monsoons. There's quite a few het monsoons to choose from. There's actually 60 that have been on Morph Market. And if you get the hets, they're definitely a lot cheaper than the visuals. And what I like to do is if I'm breeding hets back into a visual, I always go for the most genes possible because then you get the most combinations in the offspring. And keep in mind, if, if you breed a het monsoon to the visual monsoon, essentially what you're going to get is you're only going to get half visuals and then half of your, your offspring are going to be just het. They won't actually be visual monsoons. So I kind of scrolled down through all these and I decided to, for the male, I wanted to add the banana Mojave pinstripe het monsoon male. And if you actually do the calculator on these, so here is the banana Mojave pinstripe het monsoon, a really good looking snake. If you bred it to a visual monsoon, this is what you get a whole bunch of different combinations, uh, pretty much 16 different combinations. And everything from a het monsoon all the way to the crown jewel, which would be the banana Mojave pinstripe monsoon, with and pretty much everything in between. So everything you'd either get half of them would be visual monsoons, half would be het for monsoon. Here's another project I've been thinking about getting into, and if I had an unlimited budget for my third pair of snakes, that would be the puzzle. And the puzzle is kind of interesting because it has these interesting stripes down the side, and it almost looks like a puzzle. It's kind of interesting how they named it, and you can see that it really works well with quite a few genes. It's kind of interesting. Here is a, a bamboo puzzle. This one's kind of interesting. And out of all the puzzles that I've seen on here, the puzzle is recessive too. So, you know, a lot of these projects, they're really expensive. They're really holding their price really well because they are recessive. And it's really difficult to actually get more genes into recessives because what you have to do is you have to produce the hets and then you have to breed them back to the females. And everybody's always waiting for the females to be ready. It's usually at least two to three years, sometimes four to five years, depending on how picky your females are as far as feeding. And pretty much... If your females don't eat enough, then they don't get to size quick enough, and then it slows everything down. So it's, it's really essential that you get your females on food. As a matter of fact, I have a pied female that you've probably seen in some of my last videos. It is really huge, and I've tried to breed it quite a few years, and I've yet to have that female pied actually lay eggs. I've been sitting on that thing for like five or six years, and that thing will just not breed. I just can't believe it. And you get, you get into high-end project like this, this. And then by the time you actually breed it, a lot of these prices could come down and you could uh, kind of miss the boat producing snakes. So that's kind of a, a risk you take. So in the puzzle, I would say that the, the two that I would really look at, this one is amazing. This is the Lesser Platinum Puzzle. And the interesting thing about the Lesser Platinum is... I think there's a lot of confusion with the lesser platinum because there's actually the lesser gene and then there's the lesser platinum. As a matter of fact, I think the very first 
snake that they that they found with the, the lesser and they called it the lesser platinum then they realized it was actually two genes one was the lesser and the other one was the het daddy so then they kind of split it into two and they named one the lesser and then the other one the lesser platinum which was the combination of the lesser and the het daddy which is a little bit confusing <laughs> if you get into the the lesser platinum kind of stuff so for the other one, that was the female. For the male, I would definitely do a couple jeans that really look impressive with the puzzle. This is the banana fire puzzle, which is, which is pretty amazing, pretty impressive snake. And it has multiple genes in the mix, so you get you know quite a few different offspring from the pairing. So if you actually pair these together, the Het Daddy Lesser puzzle and the banana fire puzzle, you get a whole bunch of different combinations from that pairing which is kind of interesting and a lot of this stuff hasn't been made before so you really can't click on it and see the pictures here on the world of all pythons so here's another project that i would definitely get into for my fourth project with an unlimited budget and that is the panda pides the panda pides are essentially the the straight black and white snake this is it's as stark and dramatic and as contrasty as you can get in any ball python that's pretty impressive but the thing with the panda pines is if you want a really impressive snake you really don't want to mix other genes into the mix you want just the panda pied crossed with the panda pied and the panda pied is essentially a piebald with a super black pastel so it's a super on top of a recessive it's pretty impressive so what i would do is the hard thing about uh some of these pines is a lot of times they have more or less white in there you really i really think the the 50 50 is kind of ideal but you can never really predict it sometimes you get a really black snake sometimes you get a really white snake sometimes it's 50 50. so if i had any of these to choose from i would definitely choose this as my female take a look at this this is one of the most beautiful snakes ever produced, I think, on the world of all, on a morph market here. It's pretty amazing. This one is $10,000. I'll take it, no problem. We have an unlimited budget, and this one's already sold. So, you know, this is our fantasy buying spree anyway, so it doesn't matter. And over here, this is the male. And the interesting thing is... This one sold for 9,000. So that's another 19,000 on top of everything else that we're doing. And of course, if you come over here to the Genetic Wizard, you know, we pair the two together, the Super Black Pastel Pied crossed with essentially the same thing. You get 100% Panda Pied. So essentially what we're doing is we're producing a whole clutch of Panda Pieds. And the, the interesting thing is they all will be slightly different because of the amount of black and white they're almost like little snowflakes it's it's you can breed two of the same thing together with a pied and then you'll end up with a whole variety of snakes that look completely different because of the differences in the black and white so even though it's the same morph that we're producing across the board all the hatchlings will look quite a bit different which is which is neat so here is my final project that I've really been wanting to get into. Just haven't really pulled the trigger on this, and this is probably the one that I'll get next, uh, even with a limited budget. <laughs> but if I had an unlimited budget, I would definitely get into the Asphalt Yellow Belly, which is also called the Freeway. And I know there's also the Gravel Yellow Belly, and to me personally, I think the Asphalt is, is a little more intense and contrasty than the Gravel. And you add the two together, and it's actually an allelic combination. The asphalt almost looks like a normal by itself, and the yellow belly almost looks like a normal. You really can't tell. They're really subtle morphs. And then when you mix it together, it is so impressive the way these snakes pop. It's, it's, it's almost unbelievable. I can't even believe it myself. So just take a look at some of these combinations. And, and the first thing that kind of strikes you is just the, the whole dizzying array of of all these really intense colors and patterns and how they work well with so many genes it's pretty amazing and you can just look through you know page after page and there's so many different really fantastic just bizarre these snakes don't even look real <laughs> they look like toys it's amazing it's a really neat project to get into but the the funny thing is is when you're breeding asphalt yellow belly to itself 
you won't get a whole clutch of the the same thing in asphalt yellow is because it's allelic so if you if you brand uh, a freeway to a freeway which is the asphalt yellow belly essentially what you get is you get some freeways because of the mix but you'd also get some super asphalts and you'd also get some super yellow bellies which is an ivory it's an all-white snake so you have to keep that in mind that there's kind of a you don't really it's not like the panda pie where you breed two together and you get a whole clutch of panda pies you, you're kind of playing the odds with this game and i think that's what really keeps a lot of people out of this because if you bred an asphalt yellow belly to a normal it's such a subtle mutation you couldn't even tell the difference between the asphalts and the yellow bellies and they look very similar to normals so it's I'd say that's probably one of the most difficult things about the project, but if you actually get the two together, it's pretty obvious. It's a pretty neat. So if you come over here to, um, this is another page I was just kind of looking through all the different colors and patterns. I was trying to pick which one would I actually pick out of all of these, and I actually decided on this one. Take a look at this. This, this snake is like no snake you have ever seen this is a banana banana mardi gras and and the mardi gras is essentially what it is is, is the freeway with enchi on top of it they call it the mardi gras with the banana on top of that so that's why they call it the banana mardi gras it's it's probably one of the most impressive snakes that i've ever seen and this one actually sold for ten thousand dollars <laughs> it's pretty amazing we'll add that to the bucket list that we want to add to our breeding project with our unlimited budget and this is a female so we have to add a male we definitely want to add a male to this and this is kind of a really interesting snake i really like this one this is cypress, not a gene that a lot of people work with it's cypress enchi asphalt so this is this, since it has the, the, the yellow belly and she asphalt, this is another Mardi Gras, but it has the cypress on top of it. And if you come over here to the genetic calculator and you type in all those genes, you actually get a dizzying array of all the stuff that you can get. It's, it's pretty amazing. You get super asphalts, which is also called the 401 ball, and you get some ivories. And the funny thing about the ivories is if you if you have a super yellow belly mixing the two together and you end up with the, the, the double double decker yellow belly which is called the ivory and the ivory pretty much washes out all the other genes so you can have an ivory and have a whole bunch of genes on top of it and you don't really know what's in that ivory so a lot of times people sell an ivory really cheap with the potential of all these other genes in there that's how you can actually pick up a lot of genes fairly cheap because a lot of people don't know and they sell it usually for pretty much the price of an ivory sometimes you can pick up some really good deals all right, so this is pretty interesting. I actually went through and added up all of the prices for all the snakes that we just bought. We have an unlimited budget, but how much money did we actually spend on the, those 10 snakes? And this is going to actually blow you away. This is pretty. Uh, this is a pretty large number. We actually spent $112,250. That is pretty amazing. All right, so it is time for the question of the day. And Lint4GI asks, have you ever tried feeding hamsters to your snakes when they go on a really long fast? And that is a very good question. As a matter of fact, I would not recommend using hamsters to feed to ball pythons. And there are several reasons I'd say, number one, that I'm pretty sure that hamsters taste a lot better than regular, the straight Norway rats. And if you get them on hamsters, sometimes they can get stuck on hamsters. And it's pretty much the same way with African soft furs or mice. And the problem is, is for example, example if you fed your your snake hamsters and that's all it would eat and you tried to sell your snake a lot of people go oh I need to buy hamsters I don't know if I want to buy that snake because number one hamsters are really difficult to find in some cases and then I'd say most likely they're probably more expensive because they're not as reproductive as Norway rats and let me tell you I used to have African soft furs and I'd compare the, the productivity and just the breeding of the two compared to regular 
a Norway rat and there is no comparison. Nothing breeds as fast as a Norway rat and the growth rate of regular rats is amazing. It'll just blow you away and it's, it's almost like if you have African soft furs next to rats, the African soft furs are like pets compared to the rats because the rats are grown so fast and producing generation after generation of babies and then the African soft furs are just kind of sitting there lagging behind. It's pretty amazing. And the other thing is, is if you go with mice, I actually have a really productive strain of mice that can produce a lot of babies, but the problem is, is an adult mouse is so small and it's usually not big enough for an adult ball python. And you can actually feed mouse after mouse after mouse and you, you're going through probably 10 or 15 mice. And the problem is, is a ball python usually won't eat that many rodents in a row. And on the other hand, it's a lot easier to feed one big rat that's equivalent to 10 or 15 mice. And you don't have to go through all the trouble of trying to get your snake to eat that many mice and then the problem is is they like mice so much better than rats that a lot of times they'll get stuck on mice and I actually have a female ball python that's uh, it's a mouser and that is not what you want because you'll pretty much never get them up to breeding size because you can't really put enough weight on them with mice so that's pretty much it thanks for watching and I will see you next time